Hi everyone, today we will be looking at UUSD and then finally at NASDAQ. that we haven't analyzed yet it's going to be nasdaq. nasdaq okay so nasdaq once again is something that a lot of you guys like trading um back when i started trading nasdaq was actually not an option to trade we only had currencies um so the reason most people like trading nasdaq is obviously because of the volatility of it is of of nasdaq um but there's so many different ways to actually trade nasdaq but what i want you a lot of you guys to understand is it's always about starting on the bigger time frames and once you have the bigger time frames, it's so simple to trade it on the easier time frames or on the smaller time frames. And what I will be showing you guys today is how to trade it on the 15 minute, even to the one minute time frame. And it's something that I've found worked for myself. And I'll obviously show you guys how I do it as well. Okay. Then let's quickly look at the daily. So we always want to understand how did the Friday close? So the Friday had a nice bullish close. Already we knew for the week that we're looking for pullback to take a buy. So let's quickly jump to the 6H time frame or even the 4H time frame. I'm going to stick to time frames that obviously you guys have as well. So starting on Monday, we obviously know that we're looking for buys. Okay, so what I would have done is obviously add my FIB from low to high, like I always do. Wait for pullback into my 61 to 78% FIB. And we can see once again, as price dipped into that level, we had multiple candlestick indications. After that pin, the pin bar candle, we knew there's a good trade coming up. So what I do then is I jump to the 15 minute time frame, and even the one minute time frame is something that you guys can do. It's something that I've been using for quite some time, and I will be showing you guys how do I actually trade on the one minute time frame. But this is mostly used for gold and for Nasdaq. Um, it needs to be quite a volatile bear. So once the price comes out of of the zone okay so you have a zone and then when price comes out that obviously forms a little bit of a resistance area so what you want to be doing is you want to add your area of supply so your selling area once we have a break of structure like we always do then you add your fib from your low to your high point okay so what you will then be doing is looking for pullback into the 61 to 78 percent fib area okay so now what the key is once again is starting your buy position over there having a stop loss just below that area and then obviously extending your tp two key things number one if you're going to be taking this trade you need to use the same risk management so you if you know you're using a one lot size with raise effects i'm not going to explain other brokers obviously um, if you're using a one lot size then you're going to be risking 40 dollars. so that means every single time you enter the trade you risk 40 dollars 40 dollars 40 dollars but I, what i will do is rather than using a one lot size I always have two or three entries. So I'll have an entry there. I'll have a entry over there and I'll have another entry over there. So if price does dip against me, I will buy again, increasing my risk reward, meaning that you don't need such a high success rate to actually be profitable. The key to trading is not having the most profitable strategy or anything in that sense. It's always above, uh, about having the right risk management and using the same risk management over and over again. And then number two is risk reward. Um, you, you don't need to win as much if you have a good risk reward ratio. So after the 61, 78% FIB buy, price usually buys from the 38% FIB as it's seen as the continuation FIB. So as we had that break of structure, we already knew that we're looking for a dip into the 38% FIB. And then from there, we obviously just rinse and repeat and we do the exact same thing. So that's obviously going to be a little bit of a shorter and smaller trade, um, but nonetheless, still a good trade. Then we want to jump back to the hard time frames. Okay. So we obviously keep taking those buys um, on the smaller time frames until price reaches a really big area of supply and demand. So we can buy all the way into that level. So there we will see price breaking back below the area of of demand so it's breaking back into the structure then obviously from there you can obviously go and you can start trading it on the smaller time frames once again and you can swing it to the downside on the one minute so what we will be doing over here is the exact same thing okay 
once price re comes out of the zone, it creates obviously that area. Once we have a break of structure, then we obviously start doing the same thing. We're waiting for pullback into the 61 to 78% FIB. So do you guys see how long it actually takes? It's floating, floating, and then all of a sudden it reaches that area. And then we have the 61 to 78% FIB. And we obviously have the big drop off to the downside. So then we keep selling, we keep selling, and we run straight through that area again. So then we can just keep doing the same thing over and over and we keep waiting for the pullback. So that's a really good way of seeing it. So if we look at this now, we obviously had this break of structure over here. So what you would have done is obviously add your FIB from your low to high. So this is a going to be a little bit of a difference. If you added it there, you would have had really good trades because you would have had that buy positions over there and it would have triggered all that buy orders in that area and you would have a perfect one to 12 risk reward ratio. But if you had your FIB from the bottom, it would only trigger one or two orders. So at the moment, we just had the 61 FIB buy. So we already know that what are we looking for? We had a break of structure. So we're waiting for pullback. We can't add our FIB yet. Once we have the pullback, we're going to wait for pullback into the 38% FIB. And then from there, just keep stacking that 38% FIB. And then obviously do the exact same thing as the previous time. But the key is using the same lot sizes, same risk management over and over again, and always having a stacking position lining up. And then for a lot of you guys that, that are struggling with, let's say, smaller time frame entries, or you're struggling because you're always getting knocked out of the market, there is a solution once again for you as well. Trade on the bigger time frames. So identify like a big area of supply or demand. Okay. So for example, we'll have that area of supply there and we'll have, let's do that rather. And we'll have this area of demand. So what you do then once again is you start buying on that area. So we're just looking for a little bit of a bigger trade and the same thing, you break your lot size up. So let's say using a one lot size, you take 10 cent trades and you just have 10 of them stacked within that zone. So in this way, you're obviously having a bigger stop loss because the smaller stop loss isn't always the best solution. So now you have a bigger stop loss and as price goes against you, you just keep entering, increasing your risk reward the whole time. So what this works for is if you get to that point, you can already exit the trade because you already have a good enough risk reward to obviously get out of the market. Okay guys, so the first thing we're going to be analyzing today is OGSD. So let's see how we could have capitalized on OGSD. OGSD obviously being something that we do analyze on a regular basis on this channel. Okay, so if we look at OGSD, um, OGSD is actually a pair that I called last week. Everyone that's part of the VIP community, obviously you guys got a quick update on it. And also everyone that's part of the free community also got an update on that. So in the beginning of the week, we obviously saw that we are on a downtrend. But we are not blind once again to price action and to candlestick kind of confirmation. We could see the spinning bottoms ending last week. Also hangman on the bottom of a trend. And all of them are on a key area of support or demand. So that means that the candlesticks kind of are not being taken lightly. So all we had to do is obviously understand that we are trading against the trend number one, but we are going to have a pullback. So what I usually do is to find targets is I just put my FIB on the trend and I know that I'm targeting the 61 to 78% FIB. So, so we are, so we were looking for, sorry guys, the, the camera just died. So we are looking for pullback into that range. If we actually drop down to the one H time frame, we already knew going into Monday that we're looking for, for that trade. So the one thing we're looking for is obviously first, just a normal entry. So you could have entered on this trend line over here. 1.2.3 extend a lot of confidence, a lot of reasons for us to jump into that specific trade. Or a lot of you guys obviously could have waited for a sh sh smaller time frame. Um, I have no idea what sound that was. A smaller time frame shift of mint. And there we have a break of structure. What do we do? We add our FIB obviously from your low to your high. You can add it from any level, won't have an effect. So we're adding our FIB from low to high, knowing that. We are obviously looking for the pullback into the golden ratio of 61 to 78 percent percent FIB. So now if we actually take that back and we can see that we were looking for dip into that level. So a lot of you guys are always trying to trade CPI and PPI and all that news events. 
But in fact is that the better thing is to wait till after the news. If the CPI or the news event w moves with the technicals, that obviously indicates that price just usually does something like that. But if the, in the, the news goes against the trend, usually you get a spike and then a push to the other side. So all you have to wait for is just that spike into that level, then obviously execute buy orders or wait for the close and obviously start buying on that specific trend. So that was it for OGSD. There wasn't a lot happening, to be honest. Um, it's a really slow moving pair at the moment. It's, it's usually a slow moving pair, but at the moment as well, it's a really slow moving pair um, for us. There's a multiple ways. You could have obviously taken a little bit of a breakout trade on the trend line as well, break and retest. Um, and I always want you guys to understand that there's so many different strategies in a way that you can can follow this. There's no better strategy. FIB isn't better than trend lines and trend lines isn't better than support resistance. There's so many different strategies and ways that you can trade. The key will once again be about how do you execute and where do you execute the specific trade. Thank you everyone that is watching and supporting. I hope to see you guys on the next one.